We've got a special guest on the channel for you today in the form of Sam Barnes from the Nonlinear and Biomedical Physics Group at Lancaster University. Now Sam's going to talk to us about the novel time series analysis methods developed by the group as applied to the study of autism spectrum disorder using EEG. Now the Biomedical Physics Group are doing some fantastic and interesting work on the physics of living systems, which has culminated in some potentially groundbreaking medical technology, the commercialisation of which has been supported by Systemic Creative. Now just before we get to Sam, a quick word about our sponsor, Easy Skips Online. Now a skip company might seem like a strange choice to sponsor a science video, but it turns out the guys over at Easy Skips are just super cool and love a bit of science. So you can find out more about Easy Skips at the end of the video and in the description below. So without further ado, here is Sam Barnes. Hi, my name's Sam, and for the last few years I've been here at Lancaster University, and the main object of my study has been looking at EEG correlates in people with Autistic Spectrum Disorder, or ASD. Before we get into some of the results of the studies that we have, I'm just going to take you through what makes some of the time series analysis methods we use at Lancaster slightly different. So in the classical approach, often people can think of systems as being composed of many small, intractable, almost noise-like properties. Think of Brownian motion on a pollen grain, where a number of influences are randomly coming in in different directions to influence the motion of the particle. The way we see the system here at Lancaster is as being influenced by a finite number of deterministic processes, often with time varying frequencies. By looking at the systems in this way, we can really unlock the temporal dimension. And this helps us to unlock, again, some hidden determinism in the signal that might otherwise go unnoticed, such as transient phenomena, which would not be able to be deduced using time-averaged approaches. Another key aspect of the methods we use at Lancaster, particularly to do with connectivity, is our explicit focus on the phase dynamics of the system, rather than the phase and amplitude dynamics. To investigate the neural correlates of ASD, we use EEG or electroencephalography. By applying a number of different probes to the brain, we can essentially read the electrical activity at different points. In particular, we're interested in the coordination between different oscillations. And on top of this, we actually want to study the phase dynamics, where phase is the position in a cycle for each different oscillation. The key reason we study phase dynamics is that they're much more robust to both movement artifacts and to noise in the background as well, both of which EEG is particularly beset by. In the figure that you can see here, we have a classic example of a movement artifact in two different pro positions for an EEG time series. The wavelet transforms that you can see just below also reveal that the power of these oscillations spikes around the point of the movement artifact. Now, we actually just want to measure the interactions between these deterministic oscillations. This movement artifact was probably caused by something like a sneeze or a small muscle movement that happens to spike the electrical activity in both brain regions at the same time. Not particularly something we're interested in. So to get to that determinism underneath, our methods ignore the amplitude when we look at connectivity, and instead we focus just upon the phase dynamics. As you can see in this time localized phase coherence picture, we actually don't detect the spurious coherence. In contrast, the amplitude weighted phase coherence, which is more typically used, detects the spike. Now we've established the methods used in the group, let's look at our autism study using this approach. In this study, we evaluate the EEG of boys between the ages of three and five years in the eyes open resting state condition. There were 13 participants with ASD and nine in the control group. The EEG was recorded over 20 minutes and a three minute segment was selected wherein the participants had minimal physical movement. We evaluated the phase coherence to find the connectivity strength between brain regions. When the phase coherence is significantly greater in the control group, a blue line is plotted between probes, 
while an orange line is plotted if the ASD group coherence between probes is greater. The medium frequency region, which we define as 3.5 to 12 Hz, demonstrated a consistent trend for lower coherence in the ASD group. The most consistent differences between groups were in the frontal regions. The focus upon frontal regions is motivated by connectivity differences in the literature. Although the findings are quite heterogeneous, with some reporting hyper and some reporting hypo connectivity. Regardless, these changes to the frontal region may represent the executive dysfunction that's often found in ASD individuals. Wavelet phase coherence measures the similarity in phase difference of two signals across time. It measures functional connectivity by evaluating the phase synchrony between brain regions. Figures A and B illustrate the median coherence between the frontal probe combinations. The blue lines of figure A represent the control group and orange lines of figure B represent the ASD group. The violin plots of figure C illustrate the distribution of the data and the p-values are found using the Wilcox and Ranksum test. Significant differences across all frontal probe combinations were found. The differences found in the frontal networks of boys with ASD holds promise as a diagnostic biomarker for the condition. In future, this work could be expanded to include different cohorts and different frequency bands to really try and encapsulate the full heterogeneity in the condition by looking at different areas of the brain. In addition, we can evaluate different neurocognitive conditions such as ADHD. Thanks Sam. Hope you guys have found this interesting. Obviously we've only covered the surface details of the study in this video, but if it's whetted your appetite and you'd like to know more, check out the links in the description to the published research behind this study. The results we presented today and others are currently undergoing peer review, but as soon as it's published, we'll drop it in the description down below. So thanks for watching. Keep your eyes peeled on the channel as always for more scientific content and check out our socials for interesting stuff that happens behind the scenes. See you soon. This video is brought to you by easyskips.online, the quickest, easiest way to order a skip. What can we do with a skip, Eve? Camp. Balance. Science. So we're now generating 115 hertz from the speaker and we're measuring the amplitude using this app at this side of the skip. So I'm going to change the frequency and we're going to see what happens to the amplitude. But I'm going to have to shut up while I do it because otherwise this is just detecting my voice. Whatever you do with your skip, make sure you get it from Easy Skips. The clue's in the name. <laughs>